You're live. Mm. Happy Halloween. Yes. Dia de los Muertos. Who are you dressed up as? I will, today, nothing. No, no one. No. I'll be Davis Lover. No. I'm dressed up as a mildly under the weather middle aged man. But um Oh, a pretentious homosexual. Not me. Oh, okay. You think I'm pretentious? No, me. Oh, oh yes. Uh so today's Halloween and the theme was second verse, same as the first. So sequels to major horror franchise. But yeah. also that are repeating patterns. Where what's the reference to that? Uh I am Henry the theme. I am. Oh. Don't you remember Patrick Swayze singing that ghost? No. Oh. Time to rewatch. Ugh. The options were The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, Halloween 2, Friday the 13th Part 2, Child's Play 2, and Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Of course, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 won. Who did you vote for? Uh, Friday the 13th Part 2 because it's been the longest since I've seen that. I don't know. I probably would have voted for... <sighs> but of those films, the only one I like is Halloween 2. The, with Jamie Lee Curtis, not the Rob Zombie Halloween too. I would have voted for Friday the 13th Part 2 because I was listening to a podcast a few weeks ago and these two homosexuals were saying that that movie was like the best movie in the franchise, like legitimately scary. And one of them gave it four and a half out of five stars. So I was very interested in that. I don't know who I expected to win. I definitely didn't think Friday the 13th would come in dead last. Um, but Nightmare on Elm Street won by a significant amount. To be fair, the Friday the 13th franchise is not very good. Oh, shots fired. Well, it's not. I mean, I don't recall them. I mean, I love Betsy Palmer as Jason Voorhees' mother in the first one uh, and a young Kevin Bacon. But I, I don't think that th that's probably the shoddiest of all of them. Did you see Kevin Bacon responded to some like news event about a pig named Kevin Bacon? That went missing? No. no. I didn't either, but. All right, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. When's the last time you saw it? Uh, we watched all of them except the first one probably about four or five years ago. Because someone at, well, do you? It, that, uh, he doesn't work there anymore, oh. but there was an employee at Cinephile Video gave me the box. Gave set. Nick the box yeah. set. So we started watching them, starting with Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we skipped the first one, but we watched them all like within very within a very short period of time and it has the documentary about the making of the series yeah we watched that then there was a documentary about mark Patton, the star of this film called scream queen scream comma queen oh, we watched that like two three years ago and one of those the that was co-directed by some one of them i met randomly at the eagle when i was in new york that's right mm -hmm. um or i mean i don't know that's what you said that's right um <laughs> So this movie, the story, a teenage boy <laughs> is haunted in his dreams by a deceased child murderer, Freddy Krueger, who is out to possess him in order to continue his reign of terror in the real world. So Mark Patton plays this teenage boy named Jesse. Mm -hmm. And Jesse has moved into the house Nancy used to live in, the curly haired girl with the gray streak from the first movie. Mm -hmm. And I only know that because we watched the first movie last night. Uh, and watching those two back to back, the color of the door changed. It's yeah, you noticed that. I didn't. That the the door in her house in this movie is red. In the in screen in the second one is it's red. red, but in the first movie it's blue. In the second one, it's red in front and back of the door, so it's very red. Anyway, Jesse and his family have moved into Nancy's old house, and he starts having dreams relating to Freddy Krueger. Until one time. Freddy Krueger like accosts Jesse and tells him, "I want to be inside of you. I need this, you know." We should have started off with this movie is so damn gay. Oh yeah, <laughs> like mm -hmm. I don't know how anyone, what executive read this that didn't think it was so gay. But Freddy's caressing Jesse's face with his nails, saying, "I need to be inside of you. I need your body so that you can help me like do my killings." Well, I think a lot of it was added to in this the. Uh, production design that there was a lot going on besides I think just the script that is giving it the queer subtext sure so some people die and it's important to know Jesse this very gay boy has a girlfriend Meryl Streep mm -hmm. and 
uh, Kim Myers playing Lisa. And a best friend, Ron. Uh, Ron Grady, played by Robert Rustler from Weird Science. We can talk about them more, but Ron ends up getting killed among other people. Everything culminates in a party at Meryl Streep's house. And for, I actually thought that was a fun scene because it's so out of control, ridiculous. Like yes. Freddy Krueger is demolishing this pool party and the parents weren't shit. That dad didn't do anything. But the goal that Freddy was trying to achieve of like consuming Jesse's body, he's successful. So the final scene of the film is they're in the, the boiler plant or whatever, wherever Freddy lived. And wherever he was taking those kids to kill to them. To burn them. Yeah. And Jesse is inside Freddy's body. And just like the first movie, it's very easy to dispatch credit Freddy Krueger. Mm -hmm. Meryl Streep says, I love you, Jesse, which made me giggle because they have about as much chemistry as <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but uh, they have no chemistry. Anyway, was it going to be someone who has a memoir coming out soon? I was going to say Hugh Jackman and his uh, wife, but <laughs> anyway, yeah, she tells Jesse, like, I'm not scared of you, or Freddy Krueger, I'm not scared of you. I love Jesse. And Freddie just disintegrates. And Jesse uh, peels away the like the charred car carcass, carcass of Freddy Krueger. And then just like the first film, the final scene is when we think everything's okay. Just like a cicada. It opens kind of in the be like the, it did in the beginning with a school bus. And we see that Freddie is obviously not dead because we have like several, many more movies. I thought this screenplay was very basic. Oh, it's not good. And if it weren't for the fact that it's so damn gay, it, I mean... That's the only thing that makes it kind of enjoyable. It's like rolling my eyes and giggling. But I want to start with something you said yesterday. What was Freddie's revenge? What what was he getting? Can anyone answer this? What was he getting revenge on? Did, like, what did he do? What did he want to do? Well, because his revenge in the is, is more predicated in the first and third one, where he's haunting the people who burned him were responsible and, for and his their death. children. Yeah. But this one, <laughs> yeah, it feels like such an odd bird. I don't know. Because I would assume he wants to get Nancy. I guess, who's not Heather Langenkamp, who's not in this. And uh, th his M.O. seems to be completely different uh, as in needing this body of this young boy to possess. I don't know. It just felt very messy and slipshod and a cash grab. And even knowing that Robert Shea, who's I think Lynn Shea's brother uh the actress we know from the insidious movies yeah who's in this movie she, who's in this movie uh-huh yeah. she plays a teacher a teacher yeah uh what hadn't hired a, a stuntman to play freddie before realizing that wasn't going to work because he didn't want to pay robert england uh, a higher salary yeah so the production of this movie was kind of raggedy to, to begin with but there are really interesting people in the supporting cast like you have hope lang and clue gulliger as mark Patton's parents which is really because she's from death wish and peyton place and clue gulliger's and all kinds of stuff and to, including i believe return of the living dead you've seen him as an old man in tangerine um, and uh, marshall bell as the coach of course oh what do i know him from total recall oh he was kind of you know if you're a teenager and your coach is kind of good looking, he I, I, like I could see him being <laughs> maybe not today. Not that we're the same age now. No. Um, okay, I remember the movie is pretty memorable because you know me, and I remember quite a few scenes. The opening with the school bus mm -hmm, when yeah. they're driving like through the desert of hell or something. I remember that quite well. Arizona, you mean? <laughs> oh. I met a listener because I was gone on a cruise and I met a listener who lives in Arizona. Oh, sorry. So he's mad that I said, he, I make comments about Swifties, so we don't want to make him mad about Arizona. <laughs> no, he was very sweet. But, okay, Scream Queen. I don't think Mark Patton is the best actor in this movie. And the only thing he does effectively is scream. Is scream his ass off. Oh, yeah. And the first time we hear him scream is right in the beginning. He's having like a night terror. Mm -hmm. The number of times he screams combined with the number of times we see his titty meat all sweaty. It's very sweaty. Is oh, like when, you when would he, die from when he's taking in that, shots. that bar that looks like it's cruising adjacent. Uh, What's that bar called? Don's Place. Don's Place. <laughs> Don's Place is like a BDSM bar. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> that's kind of a weird name. But a bisexual. It should be called Ramrod or something. Well, Don is itself a name that could be genderless. 
Oh, yeah. Well, the crowd was, I mean, they didn't go full on. I mean, they made it more like anything goes, like it's, BDSM. It's bisexual. Yeah. The crowd. Mm -hmm. But the opening where Jesse is screaming from like waking up from his night terror, his mom, dad, and sibling are downstairs eating breakfast. First of all, the, the sister's eating a cereal called Fu Manchus, which I thought was funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the prize inside of Fu Manchus are these long red nails mm -hmm. that snap onto your fingers. But he screams bloody murder, and they didn't pay him dust. They didn't even react to him screaming like he was being murdered. <laughs> that was weird to mm -hmm. me. Oh, and I think, because we watched this back to back, we rewatched the first one as well. I think Lin Shay is the first one. Oh, she's in the first one she's as the, the teacher. teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse drives a car, this raggedy ass convertible that he refers to as the deadly dinosaur. I can't believe his parents let him drive that car. It doesn't seem safe. Well, it was 1985. He has to start it by hot wiring it and it sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. That seems weird. Okay. Getting but, but considering his dad just thinks that the air conditioning needs a shot of Freon. Yeah. That it fits. It tracks. It does. So getting to the gay shit. So, you know, Jesse's like a little twink. And then Ron, his friend, is like a hunky jock type. His frenemy, kind of. I didn't understand their relationship. They seem to know each other. So I also didn't understand how long Jesse had been living in this town. Because he already has a girlfriend and frenemies. I think they just moved. Didn't it seem like he was pretty settled? But then his bedroom's not unpacked. It's yet. not unpacked. <laughs> they just moved because he tells uh, Ron in the locker room, like, oh, we bought this house on Main Street with the door. And yeah, like, and he hasn't heard. Like, this notorious house, no one has told you you live in, like, the devil's den. Like, that seems crazy. Like, Lisa, his little girlfriend couldn't say, hey. And how did he get a girlfriend so fast? I mean, ladies do like gay men. So mm -hmm. maybe that's how he made a girlfriend so fast. <laughs> but anyway, Jesse and Ron are doing physical education. And just randomly, they get into a tussle. Like they're fighting. And then we see Ron pull down Jesse's pants. And we see Jesse's butt wearing a jock strap. Mm -hmm. And they're wrestling very aggressively. And then, of course, the coach, after he gets a few views in, tells them, okay, you need to do some push-ups until school ends. I don't know. So already it's like, this shit is so gay. Except that they're really push-ups. Well, you can do the push-ups on your knees. Those are as effective. Those, uh, sure. They yeah. had bad form. Let's you know, say that. When I do my workout videos, the trainers always say, do what you can. Yeah, but form is important. Form is important. Mm -hmm. but you Otherwise, know. you mess up your back and stuff. Well, I know all about that. So the... So that seemed gay. Then Freddie caressing Jesse, telling him he wants to be inside of him, that he needs him. Don't know why Freddie needs to do that because in the first film, he was wrecking shop without uh, taking possessing people's bodies. No, yeah, right. And in the th and we we watched half of the third movie last night as well. Mm -hmm. We'll finish it tonight. But in that movie, well, I'm assuming, right? Oh, sure. Anyway, they he doesn't seem to need to possess anyone's body to do his killing in the third movie. No. So this just feels like they needed to make a movie quick. Jesse's bedroom, the door to his bedroom, he has a sign that says no out of town chicks. Mm -hmm. I was like, girl, please. <laughs> Doesn't he look so like, I don't know. He, I, I think because I'm, I have some information about him, like w w watching it, knowing that he was a gay actor, I, I feel like I'm, but I think if I would have seen this as an adult in 1980, whatever, I would have thought that kid is, I mean, that actor is a homosexual. <laughs> well, times were different and we didn't, we didn't speak of the love we dare not name at that time. But yeah, the casting feels off. And also one, this character is not likable. Uh, and I don't think Mark Patton is the most interesting screen presence. He seems really stiff a lot. And I don't know if that's because of the performance of heterosexuality that is happening. But to me, it's a casting that reminds, it's kind of a little ruinous, like, um, Robert Altman's streamers where Mitchell Lichtenstein is supposed to be playing this ambiguously gay character. And it's like, ah, uh, it, it, it seems immediately gay. It's nothing ambiguous. Then Jesse is in his room, always in his little tidy whitey underwear. 
But when he gets tasked to like, you have to clean your room, like you need to start putting stuff away. He puts on some music. He puts on that song, Touch Me All Night Long, mm -hmm. which I think was made more popular by Kathy Dennis. Yeah. In this movie, it's sung by uh, perhaps the original singer. But like, really? Some old gay ass dance music? That's what you want to dance to? <laughs> uh-huh. And he gets caught dancing. Then Meryl Streep comes over. And the parents are like, yeah, go upstairs. Like, they know he's not going to get her pregnant. So then <laughs> she goes upstairs. And she wants to help him unpack. Which, how can you help someone unpack when you don't know where their things belong? Well, you don't know him well at all, technically. No. You can help me move shit from the truck to the, the house, but you can't put my clothes away. Anyway, in his closet, in this house they've lived in for a while, just like in his closet on a shelf, is this big red journal. Like, no one saw this journal? And there was already stuff next to it. So, anyway. Get a shitty realtor. It turns out that it's Nancy Thompson's journal. The lady from the first one who defeated Freddy Krueger. And then Jesse and Meryl Streep start reading it and start just like understanding Freddy Krueger. And then at one point, at one point, does an adult reveal to them who Freddy Krueger is? Or are they the ones? You're thinking of the mother in the first one, right? Oh, I'm, conf yeah, I'm collapsing. Ronnie, Ronnie Blakely? Uh, the romance between these two. Where? How? When did they meet? They seem so awkward together. There's a scene where they're at this pool party towards the end where Jesse's like necking with Meryl. And that felt so, I was so uncomfortable. It didn't feel right until that monster tongue came out of his mouth <laughs> that I was like, okay, this could work. There's a scene where a demonic little bird attacks the family. And then explodes. And then explodes. That Jesse's dad is Clue Gulliger, who reminds me of what's his name from um, what's that television series? Not Growing Pains. Uh, Alan. Alan Thick. That's Growing Pains. Yeah. Oh, really? He, he reminds me of Alan. Alan Thick is much more handsome than. But he's he could be Alan's brother. Well, Alan was cool. This dad is like. Oh, he's, he's not. so lame and incompetent, trying to kill this bird, tearing up his house. He gets injured off of a little bitty Tweety bird. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the bird explodes. And there were so many feathers. <laughs> and there's a shot where they're all, the bird has already exploded and the feathers are still falling and the family's still just staring off screen. <laughs> okay. Probably the most notorious scene is when Jesse and his, I guess, dream ends up at Don's place. Or does Don, or does Jesse, I get confused. Like, was Jesse actually at the BDSM bar or was that in his dreams? Because he lured the coach. I thought that was in his dreams because then the coach makes him go back to the school. But then how does the coach die in real the real world? In the, he had to be taken to the school, right? Mm -hmm. I was confused by that. Did Jesse really go to the gay bar, the BDSM bar, find the coach and then the coach sees Jesse drinking a beer and decides to punish him. While the while the coach is wearing like a leather, like singlet looking thing. He's he's killed by Freddie while uh, Jesse's showering. Right, there. but they had to get from the gay bar to mm -hmm. the, so I was confused by that. But then the coach brings Jesse back at night, like after they were at this bar and tells him you need to like do physical ed for punishment. Then makes Jesse go to the shower, like get naked. And then the coach is like in his office, dicking around when all of a sudden Freddy Krueger drag like something drags him like a rope into the shower and then he gets tied up bondage style mm -hmm. we see his bare ass which wasn't bad and then he gets like killed with the claws that I mean that seems pretty bold it is so after the coach gets killed Jesse ends up being found wandering the highway naked. So some police bring him back home. And they're like, you need to keep an eye on this one. And the dad is like, yeah, thanks, bye. And then just like, Jesse walks away. And then the dad goes, I need to ask you two questions. He goes, what are you taking, son? And who are you getting it from? Like. <laughs> but he's naked, wandering in the rain. Yeah, the writing of the parents is so because they seem more like neighbors than family. Because even when the mom tries to say like, I need to know what's going on with you. They have no chemistry mm -hmm. as like a loving family. Something's trying to get in my body. Yeah, and you're trying to sleep with me. What is that from? Ron says that to him because he- That's he, right. He leaves Lisa behind at a party to go to 
Ron's bedroom in the middle of the night and say, stay up and watch me. Which seems gay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he gets over there and he like wakes him up in bed. Ron's shirtless. And then, yeah, Ron just comments like, you're trying to have sex with me. Like, <laughs> And then Jesse sits up and he's like, it's happening again. That's he's, right. He's such a drama queen. And that's the scene where he, where Ron gets killed. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of Ron's bedroom, he had a leather comforter. Yeah, it looked uncomfortable. Right? Because we also know it's hot wherever they live because they keep talking about the air conditioning not working. And at one point, they say it's like 95 degrees in the house. Mm -hmm. And Ron lives down the street. So what's he doing sleeping with a leather comforter? And he's got a... <laughs> He's, his po he's got a Tina Turner poster and um, Lamal from Neverending Story and from Ku Ku what's that band? Kuji Kajagogo Ka Ka Kajagugu, whatever they sing that song. Um, what's that song they sing? That, well, the I sang it last night. I you did. It, that's Damn. Their, their biggest hit. Anyway, I thought that was funny. Like this old gay ass band. Like he has a poster of them on the wall. <laughs> He's inside me and he wants to take me again. That's Jesse screaming to Meryl. Like, th th this dialogue. Mm. So at the pool party, when Meryl finally sees Freddy Krueger, she tries to stab him with like, what is it up? Like a knife? Mm -hmm. And she's stabbing him like. She also throws a shirt in his face. And throws a t-shirt at Freddy Krueger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like he's not going to do it like uh, Edward Scissorhands. Ugh. But Freddie at the pool party, just running around like reckless. Mm -hmm. You know how like when dogs or cats get the zoomies? Mm -hmm. That's how Freddie was acting, just running around like flipping a hot dog table. Or And he lacerates some boy and they, they end up being like, oh yeah, everything's fine after that party. The bo that, that boy confronts Freddie Krueger and actually tells this like burned, like psychotic demon from hell with like knife hands. He goes, I'm here to help you. And Freddie slices and dices his ass. <laughs> That was probably one of the better scenes. I laughed out loud. I love how they, the, they triumphantly start the party when the parents' lights go off in the bedroom. It's like they can clearly hear. They didn't instantly become unconscious. Right. And then immediately we hear the parents go, oh, here we go. And then the it, mom's like, kids are just being kids. It wasn't Michael Jackson's bedroom. Right. Oh, I can't edit that out. Damn. <laughs> what? He, the, the, passed out then the dad hears all this commotion and screaming finally comes outside after having to break a glass cabinet to get a gun and then freddy krueger's right in front of him and he doesn't keep shooting him that was crazy and then they watch freddy just walk through the the he, fence and he's the kind of dad that's like you have a kid that looks like like the guy that played johnny depp's dad in the first one like i don't believe that this is your child <laughs> then when meryl gets to freddy krueger's uh boiler room or whatever the the water plant i don't know he they have like dogs with like mutant baby faces you mean masks that are uh glued on and then yeah. they have like a killer cat mm -hmm. why do we need that it was like we what, need, was i supposed to say like we're in hell that was so stupid we need something strange here oh <laughs> uh, then when meryl tells Freddy Krueger, who she knows Jesse is inside of, when she goes, I love you, Jesse, I just yelled out a big why. Why? Why do you love this boy? I wish that I had Jesse's girl. Oh. I don't know what she saw in him. I don't know why she's tolerating this. I would have ghosted him so fast. Like She does look very Meryl Streep-ish, though. You can't tell me that's not Meryl Streep. It's not. Then, uh, and also an Italian actress named Alba Rohrwalker highly favors this woman as well the ending is garbage first of all mm -hmm. like she kisses freddy krueger and i was thinking like kiss freddy krueger or die like he's gonna have to die like i mean i'm not kissing freddy <laughs> and she does it without hesitation she does where does she get the fortitude or how did she understand that if she stands up to him he'll where's the lore like how did she know because she's seen beauty in the beast i know she has nancy's journal but i don't recall them saying like oh Nancy, he, he feeds off your fear. Nancy Spongin. No. <laughs> um, the end is, uh, yeah, bad. It the, doesn't take much to defeat Freddy Krueger. But Right. Well, for a short while, and then he comes back. It's almost like insidious. Like, you just have to stand up to it. Like, tell it, I don't believe in you, and it just goes away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that with my bills. <laughs> Jesse ripping off Freddy's body looks so... I will say the movie looks good, and I do think the practical effects are 
okay, but now that we rewatched the first one, I think the first one is more remarkable. Like it's more interesting. Well, there's more care taken into. I mean, I still think the story is kind of nonsense, but uh, and Nancy's mom, I love Ronnie Blackley in it. I think she's really fun. But I, I don't yeah. the compared to some other Wes Craven movies where there are stronger subtexts and uh, some better performances from actors. I, I don't love. I don't love it either. The final scene when they're on the school bus and everything's fine. It's a short bus. It is a short bus. I mean, it, it's a short school bus that picks them up. I mean, I'm just saying. The school bus that picks them up. One of these dumb girls who was at the pool party, she tells Lisa or Meryl Streep, that was real. That was a really great party, Lisa. Yeah, and there's like, wait, didn't somebody didn't die? Didn't several many people get slaughtered to death? Mm -hmm. Didn't you see like the devil pop out? <laughs> like it, she says that was a really great party, but then I'm assuming that they were in a nightmare because then we see the bus go off the rails. But oh, and I think it's important to note that uh, this was directed because Wes only directed this in New Nightmare because he didn't own the rights to it. That's why we got a terrible film because you tried to recreate this with uh, what's that Peter Berg film from '89. Uh, where he's electrocuted. Shocker? Shocker. Yeah. That's oh, what we got Shocker because he couldn't do. Because he couldn't, he, he couldn't continue on with Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I guess there are similarities between Shocker and Freddy Krueger. So this one was directed by Jack Shoulder. Uh, and I think he, he did a film after this called The Hidden from 1987. That's actually very well regarded uh, as a genre film, uh, which I own and haven't watched. Maybe, oh. maybe I should tonight. What would you give this movie? Uh, I don't love this film. I, a two. I would give it two and a half out of five. And that's only because I think it's amusing for how like the gay subtext that everyone tried to pretend wasn't there until they admitted it later. Well, yeah, like Robert Englund, I think, was giving interviews, what, seven or eight years ago. being like, oh, yeah, I knew all about that. I was playing along with it. Yeah, because it, in Scream Queen, they talk about that. And then in the other documentary, they talk about how they knew... Like they knew that what time it was mm -hmm. and they just, I don't recall what, I mean, maybe someone in the comments recalls, but like why they thought that was for a movie. That's just a cash grab. Don't understand why you would risk alienating people. Well, you know, this is still the mid eighties sequels are still looked down upon and, and horror as a genre. So I, I don't think that there was as much care taken in thinking of the future for a lot of these. Yeah. Um, I'll go through the comments. Happy Halloween. People do like this movie. I know people have seen it several many times. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kim Myers, every time I see her, which is only in like images or in this movie, I think that's Meryl Streep. Isn't that crazy? She does look a lot. And, and there's another actress, Natasha McKellon, who is doing stuff in the late 90s, early 2000s, including the Solage remake, that also, who also got compared to Meryl Streep a lot. She reminded me of. We recently reviewed, I reviewed a movie by myself, like last year, mm -hmm. called Swallowed. Directed by or Carter, earlier this year. Carter Smith. Mm -hmm. Who did a movie I really liked called... The Ruins. No. Jamie pa Mark, The Jamie Passenger. Dead. Oh, The Passenger, yeah. I gave that four out of five stars. You did. I really, And who's the kid in it? I really liked him. Uh, what's his nuts and all those uh, genre films? But anyway, that director did a movie called Swallowed, and Mark Patton is in that movie. And Jenna Malone. And I, I kind of thought he was the worst part of that movie too. And then I watched an interview with Carter Smith. He did it with those. He did it with some podcasters, and uh, he basically admitted, like, yeah, I'd, Mark wasn't giving what I was hoping he'd give. So the camp performance that we see is kind of not intentional. Which is unfortunate. That's yeah, that is too bad. Uh, Kyle Gallner is who you're thinking. Kyle Gallner, I thought he was really good. Mm -hmm. He messaged us mm -hmm. to say thank you for giving his movie a good review. <laughs> um, oh, BMCK saw this opening weekend, 1985. Oh, oh he, Mark Patton had a fundraiser for some teen support group where he would do his scream for five dollars. Oh my god, that's a pretty. I hope he didn't do too many because I know his voice was wrecked. I mean, for five dollars, I might charge more. But... Someone hoped you'd be in costume. I don't have any costumes. I you have a wig you like to wear. Well, like to wear. I didn't have time to prepare, really. Uh, so it's a recycled wig. Yes, I was Kurt Cobain. 
Oh. Um, oh, someone just watched the movie. Thank you, BMCK. Oh, I just realized the last live we did, peop- I didn't, I don't think I understood that stickers also give money. Mm-hmm. So I didn't say thank you to those people. And I felt really bad about it. So <laughs> to anyone who gave a sticker and I didn't mention their name, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, we're someone's favorite YouTubers. We should have dressed up. We just, you just got back yesterday. I got back yesterday. I'm not feeling the best. That's why I'm drinking a hot toddy. Nick made me. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the fir- one of the first things you said coming home, because I had a movie night for Wicker Man last week and made seed cake as a pagan ritual to the uh the the gods of summer isle and it called for brandy and the first thing you asked like why is there brown liquor is there brown liquor in my house (laughs) happy halloween happy halloween why did i not get to hear joseph say you're live well there you got it Uh, i love the song touch me by fonda ray it is it is a good song and i even on my gym playlist i have the kathy dennis version because i didn't know this one existed but i did like this one oh when the ads play does that mess up so it does interrupt the live it doesn't start you where it started oh i didn't know that thanks youtube well we need money uh well i shouldn't say that i love that song too Crispy Bacon. Oh, that's the pig. Oh, Crispy Bacon went missing? Is that who I'm talking about? Crispy Bacon. Oh, no. That's cute. I mean, unless, are we really going to kill that pig and eat it and make bacon? Then it's very morbid. But. Yeah, I do like the first Nightmare on Elm Street better. It is better. It's still, again, I and I was referencing, like, there are, outside of this whole franchise, there are Wes Craven properties I like a lot more. I I don't know. I ha- after watching like two and a half of these right in a row again, it's like there are so many scenes of like people walking around in a dream state, exploring. And I will say, compared to Friday the Thirteenth, where the killer has no personality, it's fun. I mean, at least I, I think the Nightmare franchise is more entertaining. Well, Robert Englund is definitely right. the best part, and I think it's more creative. Um, yeah, for sure. Jason is like more like he's a brutal killer, so it's like very like blunt one swipe you know so it just becomes monotonous like michael myers too yeah i mean it's a straight up i mean these are what are they called like slasher slasher. but i think yeah freddie adds robert england brought a lot to this franchise uh well someone's met the gym teacher Mm. marshall i mean i can't believe you don't remember him total recall He's I got don't. the he's got what's his name on his shoulder the uh god what's that Quato or oh. whatever, the alien on his shoulder <laughs> he is good looking uh but he had the, a horrible tan did you notice he had like a farmer's tan it was really obvious he, he did mm-hmm. <laughs> huh oh yes i was on a cruise uh the scene where he tries on all the clothes. What scene is that? Is that where he's in his bedroom dancing? And he's, well, and he's hitting the, the dresser with his butt. Oh, God. That's when he's listening to the song. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what are my thoughts on Freddie's sweater? Um, it's cute. Well, you know it's cute because even to this day, people dress up as Freddie, like fashion Freddie. Mm-hmm. And that sweater's pretty chic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like a good like like flowy long sweater I don't own one maybe I should get one it's never cold get it and I don't leave the house so well <laughs> did Hugh make his announcement I don't think so but the announcement for his book says that he's going to reveal like tell his truth which is after he and his wife were splitting. We'll see. We heard that from Queen Latifah forever before the truth came out, technically. Well, but... Thank you, Tamara. This movie had me heated. In a good way? Yeah. <laughs> I do think this movie is fun. It's fun. I don't think it's good. Yeah. So we started three and Heather, uh, Nancy is in, you know, 
they make Nancy try. They try to make Nancy look very mature. Mm-hmm. She looks crazy in three well, with her like smart skirt sets. <laughs> like, where is she going? What is she? Because you compared it to uh, Karen Black's school nurse in Invaders from Mars, which is about right. the same period. That's right. Uh, yes. And what's the name of that movie again? Invaders from Mars. Karen Black plays a school nurse, and she's dressed up like an executive businesswoman and for a bunch of like grade school Snot kids. Not those kids. <laughs> Uh, and then six years are supposed to have passed between the first one and three for her character. And she does not look. Not at all. She looks very good. And you know, that actress uh, can't keep her mouth shut. She's a mouth breather. She's for a sure. mouth breather. Beautiful. Kind of like, I, and I mean this in the best way possible because we can only all be compared to this person in the same way, but kind of like a poor man's Brooke Shields. Oh. Kind of beautiful, but I mean, Brooke Shields has a podcast, and her speaking voice is very soothing. I like Brooke Shields a lot. Yeah, yeah I don't, and and she seems very like she's done a lot of like work, mm-hmm. like personally, like with therapy and self help. So she, yeah, she's very soothing to listen to. She's a little distracting though, because every guest is like fangirling over her. It's Brooke Shields. Because it's, I mean, Brooke, I mean, to talk to Brooke Shields, like, I'd be so distracted. Like, I can't believe I'm talking to Brooke Shields. We were at that one birthday party where she was eating. We were, yeah, we were at a fancy uh, vegan restaurant in West Hollywood off Melrose. Mm -hmm. Crossroads. Was that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Brooke Shields was eating across from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like, I mean, she's beautiful. But I mean, like, when people say iconic, Brooke Shields is iconic. Of course. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, not Megan Fox or <laughs> I'm saying that because I just saw an Instagram post of her Halloween costume and people I guess she broke some SAG after thing doing that I don't know because oh. she dressed up as a character maybe but um, or one of her characters maybe she dressed up as Jennifer's body I don't know the context of the picture but in the comments I saw people put iconic and it's like again Megan Fox Brooke Shields is iconic you can't just use words <laughs> The practical effects are definitely, uh, like, they're totally fine. Yeah. Charred carcass, they must be talking about me. Oh, no! I love Lin Shay. My dog is dressed as Batman today. I've been driving around L.A., and he stands halfway out the passenger window with his cape blowing in the wind. Oh, Oh. look at that. Gas prices went down, and now you just joy riding around L.A. (laughs) They're down like a dollar. Oh, let's go. Because I well before I went on the cruise, I filled my car. Well, that's not true. It It had already gone down a little. But I noticed from the last time I filled my car up, which was like a week before the cruise, and then I filled it up when I got back, it was like a dollar cheaper. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, I was by the port, so I'm assuming gas by Long Beach is cheaper because I guess the oil can get there more easily. Perhaps. Part three is the best of the series. Well, um, well so far. Larry Fishburne and Patricia Arquette, yeah. Well, the acting is better. Yes. For sure, mm-hmm. three, but I haven't finished the movie yet. Although the lead is the guy from uh, Body Double, and I don't like him. I'm forgetting his name. Oh, The New Nightmare is good? Which one is that? The well, 94 one. Oh, you said that. You mm-hmm. said people like that. Yeah, that one's, well, Wes has returned to the series. and We should watch that one next. Mm-hmm. Well, we've seen it before. Oh, Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jamie Dean. Love that. Uh, with Karen Black. Karen Black. Oh yeah, Mark Patton is Mark, the, Mark Patton is Jimmy the, Dean, the Karen Black character. Oh, because that character's tra- mm-hmm. Trons, mm-hmm. and then um, oh, and then I already talked about Cher's Christmas album. Cher's and that oh, and uh, oh, what's her nuts from Who's Afraid of Sandy Dennis is so good in that. There's someone else big in there too. Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Happy Halloween. I have night terrors. No big deal. Oh God, can you imagine? Oh. I can't rank the movies because I don't remember them. (laughs) I couldn't tell you which one I like better. I rewatched the remake with them. Who's the actor who played Rorschach? Jackie Earl Haley. Isn't he Freddy Freddy. Krueger? I rewatched that one. And I think they restored the original intended story about Freddy being a pedophile, right? Yeah, because in this one, they keep saying, in the first one, they keep saying he's a child murderer. Like, okay. It's like, I don't think he was just killing them kids. Um, Which is weird because Jackie Earl Haley also played a pedophile in. Uh, that Kate Winslet movie that I really like with Patrick Wilson, Little, what's that called again? Damn. Uh, we drove shitty cars in the eighties. Someone, someone clocked us for we or for saying like 
the high school we went to and the first car we drove because those are security questions. <gasps> oh, yeah. So I need to stop saying things like that. <laughs> Little children. But my first car was an 80s bucket for sure. Um, hi, Arkansas. Is Arkansas the home of Bill Clinton? Little Rock. I do like Ar I do like Bill Clinton. I don't like Arkansas. Okay. I've never been to Arkansas. I bet there's good food there. There's good food everywhere. In the United I'm just States. trying to be, I'm trying to find something nice to say about Arkansas. <laughs> I don't have a negative thought of Arkansas. It's whatever. I bet we could live in like a man, like we could have our own compound and never leave. Yeah. I could have a moat with alligators in it if I moved to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. That's probably not a nice thing to say. Okay. I'm not applying it's cheap. <laughs> Real estate's more easy to come by in Arkansas. We'll do I'm it. putting my foot in my mouth. Do some, Sorry. Do some Zillow research. After I can't this. edit these lives. Um, my parents let me drive a 1980 Fairmont with no power steering. Oh, my first car, which was a bucket, uh, didn't have power steering, and it was a manual transmission. So trying to bend those corners with no power steering, and I'm trying to shift. <laughs> That was horrible. The first car that I ever got to drive, my dad took me on his Dodge 4x4 extended cab pickup truck, thinking that I'd been driving around with my friends when I hadn't. And I oh, he assumed you knew how to drive a little bit. I immediately put that in the ditch. Yeah, you wrecked the car. I, no, I didn't wreck it. We just, it just, I went. <laughs> oh, I thought there was damage to it. Uh, minimal. What in your little cashew brain made you just want to go like that? Well, he was screaming in my ear because he had no patience. So, you know, I, so don't much. don't rely on you in a crisis. Don't yeah, don't scream at me. Okay, How let's... about when Lisa said five years ago was before my time? Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. Yeah, the lore of this like child murderer in this vid, like you know, it looks like they're in L.A. To, mm -hmm. or like in Southern California, and the fact that like no one like this isn't well when Nancy's mother is talking about. In the first one about like, oh yeah, us parents got together and killed him. It's like, how long ago? How was long this? ago was it? How old were you 20 year olds killing this child killer? I feel like Freddy Krueger should be so prolific in that town that he should be like the high school mascot. Like, and also, I don't know how everyone doesn't know about And this. also how her mother is the most functioning alcoholic I've ever seen. The scenes with the mother. Now we're talking about Nightmare on Elm Street Part One. And fully made up all the time, just drinking. Fully done up, mm -hmm. hair same color as her face, mm -hmm. with a bottle of what was that vodka? It looks like vodka. She hides it in the linen closet. She has <laughs> in the linen closet. She has it in the bed. Not the coach getting a few views in. He was a creep. I think assumed yes. the position. Oh yeah, he did say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the size of Springwood, Ohio, which is where this film is supposed to be set, is confusing, to put it mildly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the scope of... Because it almost looks like they're in a larger... Like, they could be in, like, Sherman Oaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can barely do a push-up standing up against a wall. Oh. <laughs> to the best of your abilities, he's an alpha Chad. Freddie wanted to seduce him. Yeah, Freddie's... Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, how old... BMC case that he saw an opening weekend and he didn't pick up on the gay subtext. How old were you? I mean, not to call out your age, but like, were you a teenager or an adult? Like, well, so when you, we weren't, uh, I think only gay people were really attuned to that wavelength historically. Cause if you go back much uh, decades before this one, like Peter Laurie is always a reference in Maltese Falcon and like the way that, the script is trying to tell us that this character is queer, that the film is trying to tell us that it, you only really know that if you're gay. Well, the theory is my, or someone said my theory has always been that Freddie isn't really in this movie. He totally represents this kid's repressed homosexuality. I think that could be an interesting horror film. Like mm -hmm. someone's uh, yeah, repressed homosexuality is causing them to. Something interesting. There's a movie called Closet Monster, Canadian film from 2014 that does some interesting things in that realm. Hmm. Him dancing is my favorite part. Dancing suggest suggestively with the little pop gun. <laughs> oh, there's a Nancy dog too? Yeah, I haven't seen oh, that. Oh, God. I like the lead character's rudeness with his mom. Like, his passive aggressiveness with her is hilarious. Yeah, they're such an odd family. I, I couldn't connect to that because my mom would have... <laughs> Well, she would have ran upstairs and she heard me scream. And then if I came home naked in the rain and told her it's none of her business... Oh, yeah. Maria would have... <laughs> She would have hit me in the back of the head with a plate. 
Did we ever see Nancy journaling in the first one? No. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, we don't see her. Yeah, was there time to journal in the first one? Well, because it starts off with that woman that looks like Amanda Plummer, who's not, her name's Amanda something, I think. But I'm like, oh, is she the lead in the first one? The scariest movies I watch are documentaries about climate change and discrimination. Yeah. It's true. Those, Those are, terrifying. are upsetting. Yeah. Little Meryl represents society forcing the girl next door on him. Yeah. I'm, I would, I'll yeah. buy into that. They just needed to help each other out to get out of Ohio. Do I recommend this movie? Yeah. I think it's fun to watch with people and just roll your eyes like this shit is so gay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and watching Meryl Streep is kind of wild. Because when we first meet her, she's at the door with her back to the door. Mm -hmm. So they did that on purpose because they wanted to have her make an entrance. And then she like turns and you see it's this woman. Make who, you do a double take. Yeah. So I would recommend it. And it's on uh, Max. Mm -hmm. So it's streaming. All the Nightmare movies are on Max. I don't know for how long, though. Oh, uh, we saw it ends like... Today, I think. I think today is the final. You have to watch them by today. You have to get through all the films today. That bird was wild. Yes, it was. Yes, Clue, is, Clue has been in a ton of movies. Have yeah. you seen Birdemic directed by James Wen? Yeah. I see, see, the thing about camp versus kitsch, I I like camp when it's accidental, like the failed intention of it. Like Birdemic, it's like they set out to make a terrible, cheap film. Yeah. the Someone said the cat it was hanging around to see the bird I was talking about. What would she do if there were a bird in here? She'd do that weird mouth thing. She yeah, that do. chittering. Chittering. <laughs> and like stand and like, she's almost like a, what do you call those dogs that point? A pointer? Mm -hmm. Well, she does this thing with her. Yeah. yeah, she'll like chitter and try to point at it. Like, bitch, do something. <laughs> well, he, who has not been found naked on the highway a few times? Ugh. <laughs> Some man on the cruise got locked out of his room naked. Ooh. I mean, it wasn't that big of a departure from how everyone else was dressed, but... No, it's probably a strip of cloth. It was just a strip yeah. of, like, bandage that was missing, but... Um, and he also was a, a man of size, so you really didn't see much in the front, but... Speaking of strips, doesn't uh, Lisa take... She get, Doesn't she get bit by Freddie and she takes off a piece of fabric and ties it around her leg? That's right. <laughs> They bring him home naked and the parents could care less. That's what I'm saying. These parents don't seem that. Also, like, moving is a big adjustment for a young for anyone. And they just don't seem in tune to, like, their teenage son having severe issues. Because the mom keeps acting like, do we need to get him help? Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, she brings up a, a psychiatrist at some point. And the dad's like, no, no. A leather comforter is wild. How do you go to sleep wrapped in hot skin? I mean, the minute I saw that shiny ass textile, I'm like, and it wasn't just the leather comforter. He had blankets under it. Let me tell you a story about Buffalo Bill. Oh, <laughs> what does he say? Is she a big fat girl? Or... Was she, was she a great big fat girl? That's that whole thing is so upsetting to me. It's Ted so Levine, creepy. Ted Levine is so good in that. <laughs> Buffalo Bill. Too shy. Too shy. 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 That's the to, hush hush. Eye to eye. Uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> it is hush hush. Eye to eye. Luke Gulliger is in The Return of the Living Dead, which right. is awesome. He's also in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where yes. he sells Margot Robbie. Tess the Dubervilles. Mm -hmm. Oh. Which she was going to make with Polanski, but Polanski ended up making out with Nastasia Kinski. Clue is great in Feast. Uh, is that the one with Jason Mewes from like 2006? I remember the kid trying to reason with Freddie at the pool party. <laughs> that was a good scene. Like, I was laying there like, I can't believe he's doing that. It looked like he was in a learning cognitive behavioral therapy in a social work course. Like, it's not going to work. In every Everybody scenario. needs love, even Freddie. Oh. Mm -hmm. If I could just get some. That toddy's working. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't that strong. It was not as strong as the one yesterday. Uh, three fingers, same, same amount. <laughs> you measured with fingers? That's what you call it. You didn't use like a half a cup or no. It was a little weak, but Ooh, okay. Michael Jackson's bedroom. Mark was 24 when this came out. I mean, he looked he wasn't this he didn't look distractingly old distractingly old for a playing a teenager. I didn't think so. Billy and Stu and Scream could have benefited by being a bit more gay. Yeah. They're partially inspired by the real teenage murders. 
and lovers, Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb. Do you know about Leopold and Loeb? Oh, of course. I don't. Yes, you do. You've seen Hitchcock's Rope, which is basically a story about Leopold and Loeb. Oh. And I believe I showed you Swoon from Tom Kalin, which is also a Leopold and Loeb story, which themselves, I think, were influenced by Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, I think. Well, I don't recall. Um, not the short bus. Nick is on a roll. It today. was a short bus. A short low bus. I would ride. I would rather ride with Freddy Krueger. I would rather ride with Freddy Krueger than a school bus. <laughs> yeah, I, the smell of still. The Hidden is a good movie. Yeah, we should watch that. I have it on Blu-ray. Oh wow! I really just lost my place. Shit. Here we go. There you go. Happy Halloween, Shirley. Yes, Natasha's in Ronin. You know, whatever, when I think of the short bus, I think of Mike Epps. He, uh, you know who, Mike Epps talks about in one of his comedy specials how he was put in um, special special education classes and, um, and also had to ride the short bus. But it's a really sweet, like the, the lessons he learned, the way he talks about it, it's really sweet. And then Monique in her new Netflix special where she comes out as queer, she talks about being put in special ed uh, and that experience. And I kind of thought that was like the best part of her special. Yeah, it's good. I liked her special. I did. I, I, I think I she beat around the bush a little too much with her liking to put her mouth on vaginas. Well, no, she says she doesn't do that. She wants people to do that to her. Which seems kind of a cop out because if well, that's all you want, then I mean, that like that's all you're doing. No. but That, that can't be all you're doing. Like, so you just invite a lady over and she just immediately like... That's not proper conversation. I also thought she looked really good in her special. She did look really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Never Sleep Again is a four-hour documentary about all of the films. I think that's the one we watched. Uh, yeah, that's the one we watched. <clears throat> yeah, Kyle Gallner messaged us. Because mm -hmm. I because I, I put it on Rotten Tomatoes as, like, did, did you add your review on Rotten Tomatoes? I don't remember. I don't think you I'm did. I'm behind. But I did, and I gave it a four out of five. Mm -hmm. I gave it three and a half. It, but it's very good. It is. At the minimum. Mm -hmm. I like Carter Smith. I've actually, I interviewed him when he did Jamie Marks is Dead at the 2014 Sundance Film Festival. Nick has a wig he likes to wear. Well, on Halloween. <laughs> he doesn't wear it any other time. It's uncomfortable. I went out. Well, it's synthetic it. hair, and it's like the netting. You're not wearing a wig cap, so it's probably itchy. And... No, I probably should wear one. Yeah. They're not, you, you, wow. Well, you should probably just bet, buy a better wig and just have it available. Um, I love hot toddies. You two are the best. Oh, hi, Scotland. Um, thank you, baby Toshiro. You guys, you're the best. Thank you. Okay. I got to get through these. Um, oh, the we so we started Nightmare on Elm Street three last night, and we stopped a little after the Zsa Zsa Gabor scene. Yeah, where Freddie's like, no one gives an f about. <laughs> yeah, who cares what you effing think? Yeah, something. who cares what you effing think? <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Talks books. I enjoyed the original nineteen seventy eight Halloween. Never oh, John Carpenter. Freddy. Yeah, I, I always want to rewatch Halloween. It's fun. Yeah. It's, like I didn't do it this year, but it's very it's always on my mind. Very simple. Again has Oh, that's what I was, with that name like Ben Tramer. Just these names that sound so fake. But uh in the first one, Heather Nancy's giving me Sue Snell vibes from Carrie, from Carrie Amy Irving. And from Carrie to the Rage. Yes. Or the Rage. And I believe Amy Irving's mother is the group therapist in Nightmare 3. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. She is the therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, someone said, Oh, I hate that the first live I catch, I can't think of one question I had for you, but I love watching your videos and listening to the podcast. Thank you. Nick, have you seen The Sentinel from 1977? It's a classic. Uh, I remember, is it Beverly D'Angelo? Is she in a lesbianish relationship with the woman that plays Meryl Streep's mother in She Devil? I'm forgetting that lady's name, but she's a very fun actress. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I do like She Devil. The Sentinel's fun, yeah. I think She Devil's my sister's favorite movie. It's or good. one of them. Vesta Rose. Happy Halloween, Italy. Will we ever do a live? Uh, or podcast on an Italian movie? 
Sure. Oh God. I just, I like those. Uh, no, we did. Didn't we do one, of, one of those? Uh, you like Giallo films? I do like Giallo films. I just watched Tenebrae while you were gone, but um, wait, isn't that uh, the one about the shark? Isn't that Tintorera? Isn't that no, Italian? No. Oh, I, sorry. Maybe Italian director technique. That doesn't technically count. Uh, this person probably means like a, like a good Italian movie. You didn't post uh, on our channel, but I wrote uh, an article for Spin for 10 Halloween films that are... I didn't scary. do that? No, you didn't. Oh, uh, but no. I, I can do it today but it's I, still Halloween. But I talk about Killer Nun, which is a favorite. Because sometimes the dubbing really sends those films yeah. over the top. Yeah. Have you reviewed Incident in Ghostland? Uh, with Nicolas Cage? I think we did. Oh. I think we did. But Siam Sono directed that. Are we going to do a Thanksgiving live? I don't know. If uh, we do a poll and people don't vote for the ice storm, I'm going to be pissed. Well, that's awkward. I'm okay. kidding. No. <laughs> It probably won't win. Home for the holidays, and I'll also be very happy to, with Holly Hunter, I'd be very happy to revisit. Karen Black and Burnt Offerings is classic. And Betty Davis and Oliver Reed. Someone gets Brooke Shields and Denise Richards confused. I would also recommend, uh, what's the movie with Denise Richards and the T-Rex? Tammy and the T-Rex. Tammy and the T-Rex is a fun movie. It's funny because that's the title, but her character name in the movie is Tanny. <laughs> If you remember, I would rewatch Tammy and the T. I mean, it's and there's a gay character in it. Yes, and they, he's like, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. She's, he's this uh, gay black man is like the best friend of Denise Richards' character. Mm -hmm. It's all and then there's a moment where like the gay guy's been like attacked, and the T Rex has the brain of Paul Walker. Mm -hmm. And Paul Walker has an affection towards the gay guy. Like, he knows him. He likes him. So there's a seat where the T-Rex, who's being powered by the brain of Paul Walker, like, helps the gay guy, like, helps pick him up. And he has his little hands. I think it's really cute. Do you like Friday the 13th Part 6? Oh, I couldn't even I don't know you. if I've seen that one. I know I've seen Jason Takes Manhattan, which... Oh, is, that's not is, six? Is that number eight? Oh. Uh, I, I think I did a marathon when I was a kid because TNT on Friday the 13th sometimes would have a marathon of the films. And I really don't remember much past two. So I'd need to rewatch those. Um, Nick's birthday is next month. Mm -hmm. We will talk about Matthew Perry and Richard Roundtree on Sunday. That's actually the next poll, Richard Roundtree. Oh, and then the poll that's going to drop is Richard Roundtree. Non-shaft. Non-shaft. Richard Roundtree films, yeah. What's Little Children? With Jackie Earl Haley. What's Aggie up to tonight? Being annoying, like she does every night. <laughs> well, actually, she's pretty calm mm -hmm. in the evening. Joseph is constantly canceling himself. <laughs> well, if I do enough times, I might come back around. Mm -hmm. Look, if Donald Trump can uh, <laughs> still be popular, I don't know why I can't say some crazy stuff. Cashew brain. Nick has a big brain. Um, I usually brain. talk about the cat and her cashew brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not uh, my first car was a horse. <laughs> Someone's watching Unsolved Mysteries on Pluto tonight. I was watching Unsolved Mysteries a couple weeks ago. I loved. Well, my I would watch that with my family, and every time that music, the theme song, I get scared. Playing, and I lived outside, of t four miles outside. Of yeah, time, you live in the middle of nowhere. In the boonies, and as soon as that would come on, go lock the doors. I tight. would go lock the door. <laughs> yep, and his, and it's funny because I was so familiar with him as a kid. It took some time for me to appreciate Robert Stack as an actor in the films of his earlier career. What's the best Hammer film? Like MC Hammer? No, no. like the, the studio. I like Pumps in a Bump, but whatever. <laughs> the Anniversary with Betty Davis is a Hammer film. Oh, actually. that movie is so good. Technically not a horror film, though. Wow, <laughs> but she's vile. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. My sister and I liked watching that movie. <laughs> um. Thank you, Franny. I finally made it to a live. Love you both. Your reviews are splendid. Happy Halloween. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There's a they fo uh, It Follows gets a sequel from David Robert Mitchell, They Follow, reteaming with Micah Monroe. You know, as an STD horror film, I find that It Follows is very heterosexual because in the gay community, that shit would, I mean, you'd have to redo the AIDS crisis. 
Mamie Gummer does look like her mom. Um, did you like Five Nights at Freddy's? She has another sister, too, that looks just like oh. all of them. Uh, it was okay. Mm. We're not going to review it. But. No, it's actually, it's like the better version of that Nicolas Cage film where he's doing the same thing, Wally's Wonderland or whatever. Oh. Um, someone thinks it's funny. I'm calling her Meryl. That lady looks just like Meryl Streep to me. Uh, if you're in the closet, I would hope that all the gay ghosts haunt you. <laughs> You two should do a podcast about Threads. Now, that's a scary film. I haven't seen that. Oh, have y'all seen the infamous Kelly Rowland line from Freddy vs. Jason? Oh, yeah. I brought that up in a podcast where she calls him the F-slur. Or yeah. no, she goes, what kind of F-slur wears that sweater or something like that? Yeah, I know that line. I got yeah. roasted by Joseph. No. Oh, you're an Arkansas boy? Oh. We like country boys. They're strong. They have thick, thick calves. <laughs> strong like ox i don't know <laughs> sure I, that's not the only reason to like a population of people but are you sure i'm just kidding. for your manual labor needs uh, no. <laughs> i honestly don't the only thought i think of with arkansas is bill clinton i i yeah i'm gonna stop mm -hmm. did you see the stop motion film junkhead no in my head nick's shirt is a sigourney weaver shirt I lost. Well, her. she is a favorite. Are we dressing up? No, I don't feel very well. I mean, you might go out. To where? No, on a Tuesday? Alone? I mean, I go out alone a lot, but I, I don't know. So actually, it's not out of care. It's not. No. I'm, okay. So you want to make Whatever. me seem crazy. <laughs> El Pollo Loco over here. <laughs> Are you guys dating? No. I said a fat person. Oh, I I didn't call someone fat, did I? No, I said he was a person of size. I have seen that Mark Patton is having health issues. Yeah, well, in his documentary, he said that he was really, well, I'm sure. I think he had some. He's, immu he's immunocompromised, yeah. so that doesn't help. Um, did anyone watch the screenplay competition on HBO with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon? No, what, Project Greenlight? Is that what? The Feast won the horror category and John Gulliger directed it? Oh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Have we thought about doing a review of Anatomy of a Fall? I mean, I reviewed it. I wrote, I did a written review for it uh, when I saw it at Cannes, but Joseph has not seen it, although I do believe you would like it. How much would I be willing to pay for a streaming service with all movies? Ten nine nine. I don't know. I don't like any movie I can think of would be free. Um, I mean, like a hundred a month. A month. Well, I wouldn't have to pay that, but like if if I had to pay, and I was real, like I wouldn't watch movies if it weren't for this. So I, that that would not appeal to me, and I don't pay to watch movies now. But if I had, if I loved, if I had to watch movies the way I do now, and I didn't get free movies, I would probably pay like. Maybe like 70. Because you have all the streaming services pretty much and you still end up renting movies. Like you still can't get all the movies you want. That's true. Because we have like ones I haven't even heard of. We got Brown Sugar. We got Fan, Fan, Fandango or Fandora. or Fandor. Mm -hmm. We still have BET Plus. I got to watch that uh, Judge Mathis movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when you add all that up, I mean, that's probably $70, $80 worth. Sure. Okay. We're great. Thank you. What's a five-star horror film? Oh, Murder by Numbers. That uh, Barbe Schrader with Sandra Bullock and Ryan Gosling. I think those two were dating around then. Yeah, that's the old move too. I mean, Carrie is almost perfect to me. Oh, Nietzsche. Yeah, I guess it's more Nietzsche. But Dostoy so then Dostoevsky was... Anyway. Um. I don't do, like, you can't pay me to do hair. Well, I guess someone could, but it would be a lot. Um, I do hair every now and then for, like, work purposes, but it's not, like, it's for testing. It's not. It's not for fun. It's not for fun. I'll do my mom's hair sometimes, like, she wants highlights or something. Um, but for me to do someone's hair would take a lot, like, a lot. <laughs> of coaxing. 
mm-hmm. and money. <laughs> it would take a lot. Well, that would be part of the... That'd be part of the coaxing, yes. Mm-hmm. It would require a lot. And I would have to be very comfortable. Like, I'm not doing hair in someone's kitchen. Because at my age, with my body, like, if I'm, like, bent, I'll, you know, ergonomics are important. And that's why I stopped doing hair, because it was just, like, my body, it was so stressful on my body. It's a lot of work. Pulling on some, you know, doing blowouts and, ugh. Five star horror films. Um, I said Carrie was almost perfect. Yeah, I think The Shining. I think uh, I really have a, a yen for The Wicker Man. Like I could put that on at any time. So many intelligent and interesting people in this chat. I agree. I also think there are a lot of funny people who mm-hmm. comment. And I, that's my favorite part because people have jokes and I love that. Nick, what are you reading right now? Uh, I've got 100 pages left of Orlando. I'm rereading for the documentary coming out. By Virginia Woolf. You did the last Argento movie, I think. Is that Italian? Yeah, Dark Glasses. Oh, mm-hmm. that's not very good. I would love to watch a review of Argento's Dracula. You had that movie out the other day, I think, didn't you? You showed it to me. Not Argento's Dracula. Oh. Joseph is so sweet when he gets something wrong and sheepishly apologizes. Do you see how people like that when you admit you're wrong? I admit I'm wrong many times. <laughs> But but sweetly. <laughs> Mad. Look at you. Can't even I mean can't even pretend to save yourself. <laughs> from what? From from, what? Oh, would you recommend the movie Synonyms from 2019? Yeah, one Berlin. That's a great film. Have you reviewed Nadav Lapid? Alice doesn't live here anymore. No, I'm not gonna rewatch that. Scorsese, which Ellen Burstyn won her Oscar for from 74. Um, I, w- I watched Jason X recently, I think in Palm Springs. Okay. I forgot to mention that in, in the podcast, but I did watch it. Um, oh, planes, trains, and automobiles. I haven't seen in years and years and years. Someone said they would vote for the ice storm. No, oh, thank you. I hope you talk about the Keith Lee debacle. Do you know what that is? No. I don't even not. know what that is. Although I saw Sylvia Miles. That is the actress that played uh, Meryl's mother in She Devil and in Sentinel, something else too, but... Um, Monique came out, yeah, in her new Netflix special, she says she's... Well, like bisexual. She she doesn't say she's a lesbian. She She's, I mean, not to get too graphic, but she does say like she would let a woman perform oral sex on her. She, and that she's like open with her husband. Big daddy. She was really trying to downplay that she's a Lebesian, but whatever. Um, she's on a spectrum. Happy okay. belated birthday to me. Thank you. MC Hammer. <laughs> Not pumps in a bow. Do people remember that video where he, they put something, he's wearing like a G-string, like, like a thong bikini. And his genitals look so big. Mm-hmm. Just like, they don't look, only strippers have genitals like that and that's because they pump them up. So it looks so weird. Do you know what video I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't like when yes, people do my that. childhood, yeah. Did y'all see She Came to Me? Yeah, Rebecca Miller. Uh, God, that got shit on at Berlin. I think I was one of the few positive reviews in English. <laughs> Someone hopes I feel better. Thank you. It makes me laugh so much when y'all say he beats me. <laughs> I'm so glad I found this channel. Y'all are making my evening. I'm glad. Um, Tyler Christopher of General Hospital. I guess I was unaware of that. Oh, I did know that. The 50's pretty young. Yeah. yeah. One dollar for all of them. Our Matt Damon and Ben Affleck boyfriend. You know they probably masturbated together. Oh, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> probably. Someone's going to read your Ion review of Anatomy of a Fall. Nick, are you cooking anything? Are you cooking anything special for Halloween? Do you always have such creative ideas? No, because I made a ton of food for my Wicker Man movie. How do people? How does he know? Are you cooking for someone else besides me? No, I just talk about it a lot. When do you talk about what you cook? What's the last inter- interesting thing Nick cooked? <laughs> I'm just kidding. When you talk about your cooking. That was not a weak drink, clearly. Uh, I I don't know, here and there. 1990s, 1900s carry. The 1970 whatever carry we did a live for two weeks ago or one week ago. I've never seen the the one with Patricia Clarkson and Angela Bettis, but you have. The made-for-TV one. Okay, I'm starting to get a little... um, the High Storm is one of the best films of the 1990s. Ang Lee, Sigourney, so good. They're all, they're actually, everybody's really good in that. 
I thought Freddy's Revenge was bad until I found out the gay subtext. Now it's my favorite. Yeah, it does enhance it. It does, yeah. The seriousness on Joseph's face talking about MC Hammer's genitals. <laughs> Bother, man. The Haunting. I've, I've been re -wanting, wanting to rewatch Robert Wise's The Haunting and The Innocence, um, which is turning the screw. Oh, Keith Lee slamming ATL restaurants. Okay, so I didn't know that was his name, but there's a comedian named LeVar Walker who I like, mm -hmm. and he posted a video about this guy, but I didn't know his name was Keith Lee. So I need to walk research more but the gist of it is him basically i think saying that these like black owned businesses are give poor customer service Ooh. and that they really only appeal to like influencers so unless you're somebody like famous or notable they treat you like shit is what i got from lavar walker's take mm. but i didn't watch it myself okay oh the a ding dong cake yeah nick made his ding dong cake that's for your birthday oh yeah yeah um, Nick mentions his movie night foods. Oh yeah, you made a... For Wicker Man, I made spaghetti nests with uh, black olives and mozzarella balls inside to represent the sacrifice and um, maypole asparagus and uh, seed cake. Where does love never... Where does love will never do without you rank on your Janet rankings? Um, I do really like that song. I like her key change where she starts off kind of deep and then goes into her normal singing voice. It was a number one Billboard Top 200 song. She got a few of those. Yeah. Curse the Demon or Night of, is that also Night of the Demon, the Jacques Tourneur film with um, Peggy Cummings? And we also, oh, go ahead. Dana Andrews, yeah, I do like that film. We also need to shout out that Rhythm Nation is still the only album to have seven top five hits from any artist ever to this yes, day. this is true. And the Rhythm Nation tour is the most successful uh, first tour of an artist still to this day. Mm -hmm. And it was the last time Janet had seen Paula Abdul for a while. And then we just watched an interview with Janet, like an unreleased interview, but it was set in like the late nineties. In France. In France, but she was saying like, yeah, she doesn't talk to Paula Abdul anymore, but clearly in recent years she has yeah, because yeah. Paula's awarded her something before. We have not read the Britney Spears memoir, which I don't think she wrote alone. We'll talk about Britney because you saw she got pulled over twice in Thousand Oaks. I did not see that. And the there's body cam footage and the police, she didn't have her license or registration. They they ticketed her, but they just let her go. She said, it's Britney, bitch. She said, My, well, you, you hear the one cop say, I know who you are, but like, you know, you're supposed to have it no, no matter what. And then he still gives her the ticket because she crossed like yellow, double yellow lines or something. And the first time she got pulled over, she was doing like 60 and a 40. But of course they recognized her. Um, Just, and she was driving like okay. a nicer car. Ma'am, I'm gonna let you ease on down the road. Yeah, but okay. she didn't get ticketed. Um, but we'll talk about that. And I did read um, some excerpts. I mean, I'm so glad, you know, I haven't liked Justin Timberlake for damn near 20 years for his treatment of- Janet. And Brittany. Mm -hmm. I don't care about Britney as much, but I still don't think like, he just seems like, a, he was young at the time, but I think the fact that he never, that apology he gave the two of them wasn't shit. And I love that Britney called his ass out, said he had a small penis, like <laughs> talking about, let me know when I'm in. And she's like, you're in. <laughs> I would die. Um, wow. Yeah. Did we review Event Horizon and Mouth of Madness? Do you know Sad two Sam Neill movies? Sam Neill has stage four cancer. I did not know that. I didn't know he was still alive. Is Sam Neill from Grace and uh, Corky or you talking about Martin Sheen and Sam Waterston? I'm thinking of Sam Waterston. So Sam Neill is still alive. Yes, from Jurassic Park and Snow White to Tale of Terror. I've seen Event Horizon a hundred times and still don't remember this man. And I couldn't okay. tell you a thing about that movie except they're in space. And I know Lawrence Fishburne is in it. Oh yes. And uh, Jolie Richardson, one of Vanessa Redgrave's daughters. Mm -hmm. What does someone say about Michael Jackson? Let me see. Uh, yes. I love both those movies in the mouth of madness. I think is really underrated John Carpenter, but Brittany really did twirl her, twirl her way out of that uh, situation. Oh, but Lil white Michelle Williams reading, um, using vernacular voice is uh oh my god interesting yeah. i almost don't want to buy the book i want to listen to it um okay we need to get going oh yeah and then we like i know about the colin farrell thing like she had an affair with 
Or oh, I remember when that happened. Yeah. She cheated on Justin with Wade Robson, the guy who sued Michael Jackson for. Oh, yes. Well, you know, when we watched that that terrible documentary uh, with Wade Robson, it seemed like that they were hinting at that even in that. Rock With You by Janet Jackson is such a good song and video. And any chance I'm with like a group of gays, like we were at a brunch a few weeks ago and people started playing you know, all the shit like L L Dula Peep and all, like all those artists, Kim Petras, like all the younger people. Oh, and you, then- You mean Dua Lipa. But and they Dua asked, Lipa. and then it was my turn. And I'm like, and people got up and danced. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying she's better, but it's just a different kind. Of, it's just a different kind of energy. It just hits different. From an international megastar and icon mm -hmm. who can actually dance. Yes. But anyway, well, happy Halloween. Yes, sad for Sam Neill. I need to read about that. Um, Blood cancer. Well, well. God. Well, yeah, I didn't know. Well, I hope he has good health care. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for joining us on Halloween. This was fun. Sorry, I don't feel very well. I don't know what Nick is doing for me later, but we'll see. Look whatever, at him. Whatever you need, as usual. Hmm. Hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No. All right. Ta-ta.